Welcome back everyone. This week we're going to talk about credit and installment loans. So when you make a big purchase like a car or a home, you're likely to take out some type of installment loan where you pay back the loan or the money that you borrowed in monthly installments. The good part about this is that you can borrow the money and you can make large purchases. The bad part is sometimes you have to pay a lot of interest. So in this section we're going to discuss installment buying, installment loans, and credit. A fixed installment loan is a loan that's repaid in equal amount. Sometimes the buyer will pay part of the cost at the time of purchase, and we call that a down payment. Some other terms that we're going to talk about in this section. The amount financed is the price of the item minus the down payment is how much money you're going to borrow. The total installment price is the total amount of money the buyer will ultimately pay. So the sum of all the payments that you'll make plus the down payment. And the finance charge is the interest that's charged for the amount that you finance. And it's just the total installment price minus the price of the item. So let's say you want to borrow money to finance the cost of a car that's $12,250 for a term of 48 months. You've saved $3,000 for a down payment, and the monthly payments for the loan is $231.50. What's the amount financed? Well, the amount financed is going to be the total cost of the car, $12,260, minus your down payment. And so you're going to have to finance $9,260. The total amount of all of the monthly payments for each payment is $231.50 times 48 months equals $11,112. If we want to know the total installment price, that's the sum of the $11,112 that we'll pay plus the down payment that we paid of $3,000. So the total installment price is $14,112. The finance charge is the interest that you're going to pay for taking out the loan. And so it's the total installment price, $14,112, minus the cost of the car, so $12,260. And so the finance charge is $1,852. So if you buy a used car for $8,200 with a down payment of $1,000 and 36 monthly payments of $270, let's find the amount financed, the total installment price, and the finance charge. The amount financed is just $8,200 minus your down payment, so you have to finance $7,200. You're going to make 36 monthly payments of $270. And so when you multiply those together, that's going to equal $9,720. To find the total installment price, it's the total sum of your monthly payments, $9,720, plus the $1,000 down payment that you paid. And so $10,770, $720. So this is the total price that you'll pay over the 36 monthly payments plus the down payment that you paid. And the finance charge is the difference between the amount that you pay, $10,720, minus the $8,200 that you spent on the car. So the amount of interest that you pay, $2,520. It's possible to calculate the monthly payment on a fixed installment loan, and we can use this formula. Just be careful when you plug this into your calculator that you don't round until you get to the end of the problem or else you may see that the decimal places have an effect on your answer. In this formula, P is the principal value of the loan, how much money you borrowed, R is the annual percentage rate, APR, written as a decimal, and N is the number of payments. We're going to talk more about APR in just a second. So a dealer offered a 2015 Taurus with a special APR of 2.9%. For 60 months. If the selling price is $27,295 and we traded an older car for a down payment of $4,500, let's calculate the monthly payment. First, we need the principal for this loan, which is the difference between the selling price and the down payment. This is how much you're going to finance $22,795. The interest rate. In this case, the APR is 0 0.029 or 2.9%, and the term of the loan is 60 months. 
To calculate the monthly payment, we're going to use the formula from the previous slide. So using that formula, the monthly payment M is equal to P times R over 12 divided by 1 minus 1 plus R over 12 to the minus N. So 22,795 times 0 0.029 divided by 12 in the numerator. In the denominator, 1 minus 1 plus 0 0.029 divided by 12 to the negative 60. If we multiply the values in the numerator, 55.0879167. In the denominator, 1 minus 1 plus 0 0.029 divided by 12 is 0 0.0024. Remember, you don't want to round 16667 to the negative 60. Moving just to the bottom here, 55. 0 0.0879167 1 minus 1.0024166667 to the negative 60. We can then do the exponent to find the value in the denominator. You get 1 minus 0 0.8651736064. So then if we just divide the numerator and the denominator, 1 minus that number. And this is much easier to keep track of in your calculator rather than writing each of these numbers down. I'm writing this down so you can see what all the values are so that when you do this in your calculator, you can make sure that you're getting the same numbers. When we divide these two values, we get a monthly payment of $408.58. A graphic design pro wants to buy a new Mac computer for $1,500 with a $200 down payment. And he gets manufacturer financing for five years, so 60 months, at 12% APR. We want to first find the amount financed. Well, the amount financed is going to be the cost, $1,499, minus the down payment, so minus $200. We're going to have to finance $1,299. To find the monthly payment, we're going to do the same calculation that we did just a moment ago. This time, I'm not going to write out every single step. We're just going to use the APR. Now, R is 0.12. So this makes the multiplication there a little easier. 0 0.12 divided by 12. 2 in this case again minus 60 because that's the number of months in the loan. If we multiply the numerator and solve for the denominator, I'm just going to write the final two values. 12.99 in the numerator. 0 0.12 divided by 12 plus 1. And then raise that value to the negative 60th power. And then do 1 minus that number, 1 minus, in this case, 0 0.55044. Nine, or 12.99 divided by 0 0.4495, for a monthly payment of $28.90. And so if he pays $28.90, and 90 cents for 60 months, $1,734 plus the $200 down payment. The total installment price, $1,934. And then to find the finance charge, we're just going to take the total installment price, the total amount of money that we paid, $1,900. $34, and we're going to subtract the price of the computer, $1,499, which means we paid $435 in interest in a finance charge. Many lenders will just add upfront fees to a loan and spread them out over the life of the loan. 
This has the effect of making the actual interest rate higher than what's quoted in the loan. To avoid confusion, lenders just use an APR rate, which reflects the true amount of interest that's paid, including all of the fees. This allows consumers to compare loans with different terms to determine which one's going to be a better fit for their situation. Calculating the APR is complicated, so we're just going to use tables, and you could use technology and calculators if you ever really needed to do this. To find the APR, we're going to find the finance charge per $100 borrowed using the formula that you see here. The finance charge, which is essentially the amount of interest that you pay, divided by the amount you finance times 100. We're then going to use the table on the next slide to find the APR percentage based on the number of months in the loan. So let's go back and find the APR for the loan that we talked about at the very beginning. We financed $9,260 and the finance charge was $1,852. So to find the APR, we first want to find the finance charge per $100. And so the finance charge, $1,852, divided by the amount financed, $9,260, times $100. And we find that the finance charge per $100 in this case is $20. So we're going to look on this table at the number of payments here. The number of payments was 48 months. So we're in this column here. And then we're going to go to where we get the closest to $20, which is somewhere in the middle here. It's actually closer to 19.45. And so the APR is going to be something like 9%. It's really kind of in the middle. It's probably more like 9.25%, but this table is just not that accurate. One way to save money on a fixed installment loan is to pay it off early. This avoids you paying the entire finance charge. Any amount of the finance charge that you don't pay is called unearned interest, and this is when you pay off the loan early. One way to calculate this uses the table that we've already used and a method called the actuarial method. So this method is just going to calculate the unearned interest using this formula. K is the number of payments that would remain if you hadn't paid off the loan. R is the monthly payment, and H is the finance charge per $100 borrowed. So this is the value in the table that we use to find the APR. It's the finance charge divided by the amount financed times 100. So let's go back and find the unearned interest on our car loan. You want to borrow money to finance $12,000 for 48 months. You save $3,000 for a down payment and the monthly payment is $231.50. You've made 35 payments and you want to pay off the loan on the 36th payment. That will leave you with 12 payments remaining. If you want to pay it off at that time, how much money would you save? In other words, what would be the amount of unearned interest? How much of that finance charge would you avoid paying by paying the loan off 12 months early? And then what's the payoff amount of the loan at that time? How much do you have to pay in that last payment to pay it off on the 36th payment? Assuming you paid $231.50 the previous 35 payments. So to figure out how much money we would save, we first want to figure out the unearned interest. Using our formula from before, the unearned interest is equal to K times R times H divided by 100 plus H. K is the number of payments remaining, and so we'll have 12 payments remaining after we make that 36th payment. R is the monthly payment, in this case 231.50. And then H is the finance charge per $100 for a loan with a similar APR and number of monthly payments. This is the value that we just calculated in the last example as $20. And so, we're going to divide that by 100 plus 20. To find the unearned interest, 55,560 divided by 120. And we've saved $463. To find the payoff amount, we first need to know how much we would have had to pay anyway. So for that last 12 months, we would have had to pay 231.50 times 12. So that last year of payments, $2,778. But because we're going to pay it off on the 36th payment, 
we're not going to have to pay $463 in interest. And so we can subtract 463. That's the unearned interest. That's the amount that we don't have to pay in interest because we paid it off early. It means that the payoff amount for the last 12 payments is $2,315. And so if you're going to pay it off on the 36th payment, this 2,315 covers the last 12. You need to still pay the 36th payment of 231.50. And so the payoff amount is the sum of those two. The payoff amount for the loan, $2,546.50, if you want to pay it off on the 36th payment. So far we've covered examples of what's called closed-ended credit, which is credit with a fixed number of payments and a specific payoff date. Open-ended credit is also commonly used, and this is potentially credit cards. This is a type of loan that doesn't have fixed monthly payments, and it doesn't have a fixed length to the loan. One easy way to end up in a really bad place financially is to not understand how open-ended credit works. One way that banks calculate finance charges on a credit card is the unpaid balance method. The interest is charged on the balance that's left over from the previous month. So suppose you have an unpaid balance of $356.75. At the beginning of August, you made purchases for $436.50, and then you paid $200. The interest on the unpaid balance is 1.8% per month. Find the amount of interest that would be charged on the unpaid balance, and then what's the new balance on the card. So we started off with 356.75. We made a charge of 436.50, and we made a payment of $200. So at the end of the month, when we account for our transactions, the unpaid balance, 593. 25. The interest charged on that unpaid balance is 1.8%. And so if we multiply the unpaid balance times 0 0.018, or 1.8%, then we'll find the finance charge, or the interest that's charged on the unpaid balance of $10.68. So to find the new balance on the card, we have to include the unpaid balance and the interest charge the new balance is going to be equal to $603.93. Another way for banks to make money from your users is to use an average daily balance method to compute the finance charge. This is done by computing the average daily balance across a given month and then compute the interest from that average. This just means that you're paying interest from the moment you make the purchase until you've paid off the purchase. Calculations for the average daily balance can be done in a series of steps, and so we're going to work through the next example together. We're going to use these transactions to find the average daily balance, and then from that we're going to calculate the interest charge of 1.8%, and then we're going to find the new balance on September 1st. So on August 1st, the previous balance was $356.75, and it remained at that balance until August 7th when $59.95 was purchased. So if we add $59.95 to $356.75, we have a balance of $416.70. Then on August 12th, there's another purchase of $223.75. If we add that again to the balance, we now have a balance of $640.45. This whole column is in dollars. On August 18th, we made a payment of $200, so we can subtract that from our total, leaving $440.45. But then on August 24th, we made one more purchase for the month of $152.80. If we add that to our total, $440.45 plus $152.80, $593. 0.25. After we found the balance on these particular days from our purchases, we need to know how long our account was at that particular balance or for how many days. So the number of days from August 1st until August 7th when that next purchase was made is going to be 6. August 7th until the 12th, well that's 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, so there's 5 days there. August 12th, 
until the 18th, so 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So there's another six days there. And then 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. One, two, three, four, five, another six days here. And then the 24th through the 31st, that is eight days at that balance. And so this gives us a total number of days of 31. We now want to multiply the balance each day times the number of days. We're going to add all of those values up and divide by 31 to find the average daily balance. 356.75, if we multiply that times 6, 2140.5, and then just continuing down, And now that we have the balance times the number of days, we're going to add all of these values up. 15,455.4. If we then take that 15,455.40 and divide by the number of days in August, we get our average daily balance of $498.56. Then to find the interest charge, if the interest rate is 1.8%, like the last example, 1.8% 1 of 48856, 498.56 times 0 0.018 for a finance charge of $8.97. And so to find our new balance on September 1st, when the finance charges go through, we're just going to add 897 to our current balance of 593.25 and we have a new balance of $602.22 on the 1st of September. Before 2003, minimum payments on credit cards were not required to even cover the amount of interest. So if you didn't pay enough of your interest, your balance would just continue to go up over time. Now they fix that so that credit card companies have to require your minimum payment to cover the interest amount plus some amount of the principal. That way your bill is going down over time, even if it is not going down by a lot over time. Minimum payments will always make you pay the most amount of money over time. The best thing to do in terms of finance charges is just to pay the credit cards off each month as you use them. So let's just take a look at what happens with a purchase when you make minimum payments. Suppose you have $2,300 balance on your credit card with an interest rate of 1.25% per month. And the minimum payment for any month is the amount of interest plus 2% of the principal balance, or $5, whichever is higher. If you don't make any more purchases on that card and you pay the minimum payment for six months, how much will you pay down the balance? We could calculate the minimum payment here, but we don't really have to. Because after each month, if we're not making any more purchases, after each payment each month, the principal will go down by 2%. So that means our $2,300, if we pay 2% of it, we're left over with 98% after, so times 0.98. That leaves $2,254. If we do this again and again for the first six months, remember that what we'll have is $2,300 times 0 0.98 to the 6th power. We're going to reduce it by 2% each time. And you're left with $2,037.44. And so the total amount that you've actually paid on the balance after 6 months of paying minimum payments, $262.56. Please let me know if you have any questions.